Hi internet friends, my name is John and welcome to episode 11 in my series of how to create a website using Umbraco V8. Now the theme in today's video is all about content modeling. Now content modeling is the process of thinking about what document types that you're going to apply into your project and more importantly what properties you're going to add onto your document types and think about it this is really important because it can allow your content editors to be able to create a bitch in really cool content so the process of content modeling is definitely something you should give some thought about now unfortunately i do think that when it comes to learning about properties and content modeling within Embraco, things are a little bit more confusing compared to some of the other cms systems in the market and this is because within Umbraco CMS, we have three different types of terminologies. So you can hear about properties, you'll also hear about property list editors, and you'll also hear about data types. And I know that when I first started learning Umbraco, I found it really confusing about what these different things are. So what we're gonna do is kickstart this video and we're gonna talk about all these different nuances. And then we're gonna wrap up just looking at all the default out of the box core properties that come with Umbraco. Now, I do think that Umbraco provides probably more core properties than any other CMS system that I've ever worked on. It comes with about 10, 20 different properties. And as soon as you get your head around some of these concepts, you're gonna be able to model some amazing content. So if this video is really useful for you, and this is the first time you've come across one of my videos, don't forget, hit that subscribe button because I would very much appreciate it. Now let's get on and model some content. As you can see, we are now within our Umbraco backend. And as I'm about to highlight, you'll see that we are within the settings section. Now, if you have a look around the settings section, you will notice that there is absolutely nothing here called properties or property list editors whatsoever. So what is up with that? If you're eagle eyed enough, you'll see that we do have something called data types. However, there's nothing whatsoever where we can add in property list editors or properties. And this is the difference between a data type and a property list editor. So the property list editor is code, code. And it defines you know, how their property is gonna look within the CMS. It's gonna define the fields that can be added and applied to that property. However, it can't directly be added onto a document type. So the only way that we can add a property onto a document type is through this data tab. They are two different approaches for creating our data taps within the CMS. And the approach that I recommend that you always follow is to create your data types before you create your document types. And you do that using the left hand side panel right here, this data type screen. So if I expand on it, you'll see that we have a number of property looking things appear. So we've got quite a big list. And some of these things definitely look like they're just properties. So a good example is date picker. So date picker sounds like a property, right? It's a date picker. However, it is a date type. Now, if you look at some of these other options, we have this blog dash how many posts should be. So this is named terribly. However, I think we can all agree this doesn't sound like a property. This sounds like something else. And this is what the data type is. So the way that I recommend we create a new data type is if we click on these three little ellipses, click on this new data type option. And as you can see, we're on the new data type screen. So the first option we have is to give our data type a name. And this is manually forcing us to create a name from scratch. And this is a good thing. And this is the reason why I think you should always use this approach because it will make you think about your data types. So if I just call this John text box, you can probably guess what type of property I'm going to create. Now, as you can see underneath, we have two different fields, one which is called property list editor, where we have this drop down. And as you can see, that label is selected. And underneath it, we have this field called value type. Now, you may be thinking that value type is actually a type of data type or is a property associated to the data type. However, it's not. This value type is associated to the label. So we can prove this by randomly selecting something else. So file upload, you can see it has no fields defined. If we do decimal, you can see that we have these three minimum step size and maximum fields associated with it. And if we click on the classic, that is the text box, you can see that we have this maximum allowed characters. So if I do maximum allowed characters one and click save, this is our data type created. 
Now I've created some other data types previously. And as you can see, we've now got a data type 20, 30, 5, 60, 10. And this is where the reuse of the data type comes in. So instead of us having to create the same validation over and over again, you can create this one data type and then apply that to your document types and things are great. It is also possible to create data types in Braco whenever you're creating or editing existing document types. And this is possible through the property builder within the document type screen. So as you can see, opening up the document type screen right here, we have a list of all the existing document types. I've created one which is called properties. Now clicking on that pops up this new document type builder screen. And as you can see down the bottom here, there's this big jumbo button called add property. Clicking on that big add properties button will launch this property settings screen. And from a property settings screen, we can add a name, we can select an editor, and we can add some validation. So if we select select editor, what do you think we're gonna be selecting from? So bearing in mind, you can't put a property list editor directly onto a document type. Do you think the screen is gonna be a list of property list editors or data types? Let's find out. Okay, so clicking on that gives us a big list of property list editors. Again, this isn't really very intuitive for me of the difference between a property, an editor or a data type. We'll come back to this list in a little bit to just go through the options. However, if I click on text box now, what you'll see is we now have a selection of data types. And as you can see, we have this John text box up here. So this is the data type that we saw um, that I created a little bit ago. So you definitely know that this is a data type because we did it through the data type screen. Now, one thing we can do is select create new, as you can see down the bottom right here. Now, when we create new, what you'll notice is this name property here is also populated. And this is the reason why my data type folder was such a mess, because if you're creating data types this way, and you don't really think about the name too much or reuse, it is very simple and very easy to create a mess when it comes to your data types. And the whole point about data types is to use the existing ones, not create new ones. So whenever you're creating a data type this way, just be mindful about the name and always try and reuse. Otherwise your CMS system is just gonna get clogged up in crap. So if we add our text box onto our page, as you can see, we can now add a name. So if I try to put a name, what will happen if I do a submit? We should hopefully get an error if I click save. Perfect. So obviously there's some reserved keywords. So when you're thinking about creating properties and aliases, you need to be aware that you know some of the names are reserved by Umbraco. So let's call this one first name. So if I click save, what we can do now is go over to the content screen. And if I go here, you can see I've got a page called Properties Explained. This is based on the property document type we just created. And as you can see, I've now got this name property. If I start adding in content here, you can see that the validation has kicked in. So a maximum of one character was allowed. And this is basically the process of creating document types, property list editors, and associate them onto the document types. In terms of content modeling, I think we can all agree that adding properties onto document types is super simple and we have a number of options which is great however i do think for the people trying to learn the theory and get their heads around all these different terminologies and words property list editors data types i do think it is a bit confusing and i definitely didn't really get my head around all this stuff so i'm hoping that this introduction to the topic has made it much more clearer for you about all the differences so now let's have a quick look at all the different types of property list editors that are available with umbraco so these are the properties that can help us on our content modeling quest. Now, as you can see, we've got the normal numbers, so we can represent numeric integers or decimals. There's also a number of way of writing text. So we have the text area and the text box. And if we scroll way down the bottom, you can see that we have a rich text editor, which is a bit like Microsoft Word. It uses tiny MCE. We can also add in Markdown. Now, my preference would be to always use Markdown. However, some people do not like the Markdown. Now, aside from that, we have common data types. So we have dates, there's tags. So if you're creating a blog, it's very super simple to create a tagging engine because you have all the properties out of the box. 
you can create email addresses, another way of text entry, which does some extra validation on the out character. We also have ways of representing lists and grids so we can create all the standard checkbox list, a drop down, a radio button list. We can also do more complicated lists. So using the block, the block list editor, we can use document types to represent our list items. So this allows us to create really feature rich and powerful lists. Another thing we can do is pick stuff. And there's numbers of ways that we can pick stuff. So we can pick colors, we can pick content. As you can see down the bottom right here, we can even pick CMS users, or we can pick members which have been added into the Embraco database. We can add in media, we can crop our media, we can even upload assets into the media directory within Embraco. And there's multi-node picking, multi-URL picking, as you can see, there is a host of things which will allow you on your content modeling quest to do pretty much anything you need. I have created many websites using Umbraco CMS now, and as of Umbraco 8.9, where the block list editor got introduced, I do personally think that everything you need to model content within Umbraco now comes out of the box. And there's going to be some niche instances where you may need to install additional packages. However, for 99% of your use cases, it is super simple to add these properties onto document types as you've seen. Before I wrap up, I do want to show you one property in particular, and that's just because the intention of this property is very different from the rest of them. Now, in the list here, you can see we have this list view property. And the intention of the list view property is basically just to make it easier for content editors to find stuff in the CMS. On our properties page, you can see that I've got the list view added here. There's nothing really too special about it. If we look at our properties, I have the data type selected here. Oh, I don't want to do that. I've got a page size of two. It's got some properties of order by. I can order by the direction of ascending or descending. I can display columns if I really want to and I've got some options to do bulk permissions. There's a ton of options. Now, I won't go through all of this. However, if I now click Submit and I go to Save, if I go to my content tree and I go to my properties, scrolling to the bottom, you can see that I've now got this list view thing. Now, looking at my content tree, you can see that I've got these three pages underneath it, page one, two, and subscribe. And the, the intention of this property is simply just to list out all the children. Now imagine you have a blog area or a news listing area or any of that sort of nature where you're going to have hundreds and hundreds of articles being created. Now what can happen is if you have 100 to 200 articles, the CMS become unresponsive, things become slow. However, the property list editor will make it super simple for your content editors to find stuff and edit and work with content. As you can see from the screen here, you can create new document types from the property. So I can just do create, and this is going to create a new page. I can filter that page using a very simple filter. Also, the other thing is I can change the grid view from a list to a grid. And at the bottom here, you can see that even though I've got two um, items, I've still got my pagination. So again, if you're creating a blog area or a list view area, one content modeling tip, which is going to make you a pro is always use this list view because it's going to make your CMS a lot nicer. And that concludes the end of today's video. Now, the intention of this video is to get you to think about your content modeling. Now, getting content modeling is absolutely key in creating a great website experience for your client and your content editors. Now, getting it right will be similar to being an unsing hero. No one will probably notice it or comment on it. However, getting your content modeling incorrect will result in a lot of frustration and anger in your content editors, and you will hear them bitch and moan about it no end. Trust me on this, I've been through it a lot. Anyway, I hope you found a lot of benefit and education from this video. If you like this video, then please hit that subscribe button. You literally just have to move your mouse, click that button, it'll take you two seconds and you'll get weekly content from me for absolutely free. Again, I've just finished my book on Umbraco V8 and because you're watching this video, I'm assuming you want to learn all about Umbraco. This book took me over 200 hours to write. 
I personally think it is a great resource and you'll learn something from buying it. It's available on LeanPub for $9.99. It's linked to you below. So please consider buying it and supporting this channel. Also, this is getting near towards the end of this Embraco series. If there's a concept or a topic that I haven't covered yet that you would like me to, please leave a comment below or forever hold your peace. Anyway, if you want to do me a solid, hit that like button as well. Before I want to go, I just want to say I really appreciate you watching this. Um, it keeps me motivated doing these videos. Again, I hope you have an amazing day today and happy coding, people.